Welcome to Forensic Detectives, folks. I am Dr. Cousin. Today, we are talking about the quick start for your gas, your single gas detector, and your pump. They come in a combo, and when you need to do point sampling, gas leak detection, and other things like that, where you need force there to the detector, then you need the combo. You need the pump, and you need the gas detector, folks. Now, this is our FD-90 A gas detector, single gas detector. When you purchase it, make sure you get the right gas detector. In this case, it's H2, hydrogen. Obviously, we sell many, many others. Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, HCN, HCL, and the list goes on and on. Make sure you have the correct gas detector for your specific gas detection application. Now, go forward, unpack the gas sample pump. Inside, you will see your gas pump, which looks like this, okay? Bang, right there, and it comes with the stainless steel probe. Go ahead and simply screw it on. Just like that, finger tight. Make sure the nozzle is there also, right over there. Okay, folks, simple as that. Now, the pump also comes with a charging cable. Make sure you charge the unit before use. Make sure the battery is full so you don't get those annoying battery indicators saying the battery is low. It's a new unit, make sure it's full. Now, it comes with a USB cable. Plug it up to any smartphone charger. Make sure it's at least one amp, one amp of current delivery, okay, folks? Now, once that's done, you have your tubing, your silicone tubing that comes with the pump, okay? That comes with a pump. Go ahead and unravel this guy. It's about three feet that comes with the pump. And the tubing is connected to the output port of the pump. It's right there, folks. And again, this is a barb. It's a barb little port. It simply slides onto the silicone tubing. Give it a little twist, a bit of force, and it sits nicely, very firmly, okay? So the way the pump works, you could go ahead and turn this guy on. The middle button is the on button. It's very easy. As soon as you turn that on, it sucks air from the top. It goes through, through the micro pump, and is expelled. It's expelled at the bottom of this handheld pump, and air is outputted from this you could feel it okay folks air is coming out so whatever you point shoot air will be drawn and will be coming out over here so obviously if you put this onto the gas detector air will be forced onto the gas detector okay so this is the simple pump setup that you obtain so let's just put that on the side right there and again folks just real quick quick start you want to stop the pump press the middle button you want to start it you press the middle button again quite easy okay nothing to it folks bang now next go ahead unbox your gas detector make sure you do the correct the correct items such as bump testing check the calibration certificate who knows this could have been sitting on your shelf in your company shelf or some colleague shelf for months on months make sure you're prudent this is a safety device folks okay so get your gas detector make sure everything's done Go ahead, these little units, press the middle button. Again, it turns on. Give it a few seconds, it will show you the alarm set points. Make sure you're comfortable with those alarm set points, okay? And then, it basically shows you the instantaneous concentration of what it's detecting. If it's oxygen, for example, it's detecting oxygen in the atmosphere, 20.9%. In this case, it's hydrogen. It's a hydrogen detector, zero to a thousand parts per million. And it's, guess what? It's detecting, that's right, it's detecting zero. You saw that, right? It's detecting zero parts per million because there's no hydrogen in this room. So, in this case, by itself, with the clip, you could pop it on, and that's perfect for personal protection. If I'm walking in a battery room or a situation where I need to protect myself personally from toxic gas, such as hydrogen in this case, okay? So that's one application without the pump. In this case, just like this, it's called diffusive sampling because the hydrogen molecules diffuse onto the sensor. It's not forced. That's what it's called, diffusive sampling. Okay, it's a bit of a funky word, but it's okay. That's what we call it. Next, within the package 
of the detector, you also get your charging cable. No problem, make sure it's charged. You also get your calibration cap. That's what we call it. It's a little cap that fits at the front of the sensor port, okay? So the sensor is right there and this little cap fits over it. It has a little nibble, as you could see. That's where, guess what? Yes, we pop the tube right on top and it has a little hole where the output is expelled and the excess air comes out. That's how it works, folks. It's very straightforward. Now, all of a sudden, we have the pump connected to the detector. We press the middle button and air is being drawn through the pump and onto the sensor. So we have what we call pumped sampling, forced air sampling. So you're having air drawn onto the sensor head. Pretty simple. Now we're ready to rock and roll. You could go and you could start sampling various points, various plumbing, various items that is of interest to you, to your specific application. Okay, that's the way it works, folks. So we could start pointing, pointing, and pointing. Now, Dr. Cos, how long must I hold it there for? And how much? Well, it takes some time, folks, for the air to diffuse through and onto the sensor head. It obviously depends on the source concentration because you have some dilution effects going on. But if you're looking for very, very low levels of, for example, hydrogen, you obviously have to be a little bit more careful and slower. If you're looking for a 100% H2 hydrogen leak in a H2 tank, for example, then your leaks will be 100% hydrogen. So it'll pick it up pretty quick because you're talking about PPM compared to pure hydrogen. So the dilution effects won't be as much and within the range of the detector, you see, so we'll pick it up much faster. Okay, so when you're looking for leaks, take your time, don't rush it. That's the message there today with this beautiful setup. Now, look, that was the quick start guide. We always recommend to read the instructions, read how we store the unit, read the calibration, the bump testing and everything else. Make sure you're following the typical procedures that one reads in their instructions. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it. And again, once we're done, we turn off the pump, we turn off the detector. There you go. Just hold the middle button down. Okay. Then we could just pop off the cap, take the nozzle off, unbox everything. Put the cable nicely together, turn off the pump, middle button again, folks. Hold it down for a couple of seconds, three seconds. Okay, again, take off the probe, pack it up nicely in their boxes, and you could store it and keep it for the next person. And please, again, follow the procedures. You typically, typically, we have a schedule for maintenance and calibration. Make sure you read that prior before you're using the equipment. It's very important. We want to have confidence that the equipment is calibrated. We want to have confidence the equipment works. That's why we have bump testing schedules and we have calibration schedules. This is the business we're in. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If there's anything else, drop us an email, write a comment down below. Anything else, we're here to help you. Hope you're well. Bang. Be safe. See you soon.